Hi everyone, my name is Patricia Rollins and today we're going to talk about the um, color mat and the color wheels. And these are a really handy little tool for people who are not very comfortable with color or I guess maybe just people who need to isolate the color in the stories. The color mixing mat is got a grayscale on one side so that you can tell how dark or light your colors are. And when you're doing shading or highlighting and things like that, you want to isolate your values, like you squint your eyes at that and you say, okay, my background is like a value, one, two, three, four, and then, so that means maybe I want my rows to be the same value. You can use this color, um, the, the grayscale, for deciding how dark or light you want to do things. If you're going to shade something and you're starting with a value of, say, three, then you want to do a two-step shade. If you reach further, then you run the risk of your shading looking like it's very um, harsh. Same thing with highlighting. If you're up here in a 10, um, or some people start the opposite way and say this is a 1 and then this is 10 either way. And if you're at this extreme, then you would want to skip down 2 for your highlights. If you jumped way over here, this would be very, very, very bright. It would be like electric. Okay, and then right here, you have a mixing area for your color. So you decide you want to mix some color. Um, this is isolated gray. It's the middle value. So what's going to happen is you're not going to, when you're mixing your colors, you're not going to look like, if you put black on white, it's very, very extreme. But if you put black on gray, you can see it better. Same thing with white. It's not as jumpy, I guess. And then, of course, you have your toned color wheel. So this has got your most vivid colors out here on the outside, and you go in and it starts toning down, and it's being toned with white in this case, okay? And you've got a ruler, you've got mixing tips. This is placemat size, so it's perfect for working on um, projects. Great for classes. Okay, so then flip it over on the other side, and this gives you the, um, the names of all your colors on there. It gives you the color families and what they mean. It gives you some examples of that color being used and then of course more color theory up here so it's a really excellent education tool when we pair it with these um, little wheels they've got we've got wheels and they're they're labeled this one's a triad split complementary um, tetrad they kind of look like nuclear waste symbols here okay so let me show you how this works and we'll, we'll start with the easy one the complementary Complementary is just like it sounds, it is the opposite on the color wheel. Okay, so it is colors, if it's red orange, it's complement color. The one that's going to look the absolute most sizzling and dazzling is going to be opposite. Okay, it's a really simple color story. Um, you've got to be careful to have one of the colors dominant. Okay, so we're going to flip that on there, and now we can see what those colors are going to look like without all this noise. That's a lot of noise. So we can isolate the color and we can just go around and say, okay, you know, my red orange is a little bit more towards the red orange and not so much orange. And then I can see my teal with it and I can um, just isolate the color. However, like we talked about, um, if you isolate the color on black, then it's going to change the way the color looks. So there's a white side to this. Okay, so now the color looks completely different. Okay, and I'll do it again. So the orange, I think, in my, um, my opinion, looks very, very, very strong when I'm here against the black. But when I flip it to the white, my orange is now settled down. So if you've got a very light tone situation, your orange isn't going to pop as much as it will against the black. Okay, so that's why you want the two sides. Is It's a spontaneous contrast, simultaneous contrast, is what that's called. Okay, since but comp complementary as well, is you skip one space on the color wheel and then you go opposite for the complements. So I might use um, like some orange flowers and red flowers and have my leaves be more in a blue-green type situation. And then I can see what it would look like if I went over here to the, the violet and the purple and then my leaves would be a yellow-green. Okay, so that and once again, you flip it over and you can see how things look against the lighter color. Monochrome is really easy, that's simple, okay, but it's really nice to be able to isolate those colors and not see it amongst all the chaff and the noise. Of course, triad, and these are ones that are equally spaced around um, the color wheel, and so they skip, I guess, let's see, three, 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 and it's every third one, 
Okay, and what's really neat about the color wheel and why I think it's so magical is it works all the time. So no matter where you spin this, your triad colors are going to be um, correct. Okay, so, and I think that's, well, here we are in our primary colors. We've got our primary, and then everything that is over here on this part of the color wheel is a version of the red and the yellow mixed. Orange is in the middle. It's an equal parts of yellow and orange. If you're leaning to red orange, it's more red than yellow. And if you're over here at orange yellow, it's more yellow than red. Okay, and as you spin around, the same thing. And of course, when you do the white. And now just is interesting because that's three colors side by side. Okay, so we've got our, you know, our very, very hot red, red violet family. And you can bring it around and make it be more orange. Bring it around, and now you're in your yellows, your yellow greens. Once again, you flip it around, and those colors aren't screaming as much. They look more pastel when they're on the lighter background. It really allows you to make some choices when you need to change colors. Okay, and Tetrad is our final one, and it is colors that are opposite, separated by one, and they're the, the complementary color, but separated by one. Okay, and so as you go around, these can be very difficult in my mind. Um, it is very difficult for me to imagine looking at this where I would go because there's so many colors. So as you get the more busy um, or the more complex the color scheme, then the easier it is to use these tools, if that makes sense. Okay, and so we'll go there and you can see what it looks like that way. Okay, super easy set of cards. It would work with just about any um, color wheel that had that amount of things, but it works perfectly with this because, of course, we designed it for this. Um, I hope you enjoy the tools. I think that they are um, super helpful. Uh, one more little hint. I've taken um, baseball card sleeves and I have made color swatches on each of my sleeves. And I've done it where um, it's solid and I've done it in washes in some cases. Um, and I've labeled them transparent where I know that that's a fact. And then I put them into here in color families. Okay, so now when I'm using my color tool, get this out of here, when I'm over here and like purple looks purple, but is it, it's not this purple, that's violet. Okay, and here we've got blue violet, so like this is definitely where this family lives. Okay, but a couple of these colors might lean towards the violet. This is really important when you're making color decisions. So by putting my um, craft paint into the book, by color family. Now when I find out I want to change, maybe I want to decorate my living room and I know that I love, let's see, in my house I love the, um, let's see, I am probably a tetrad I would say. Yeah, yeah get it on there. So I've got yellow walls and maybe some pops of red and then just some toned blues here and there. Okay, so when I'm doing that and I know that I want my blues, I can go to my, um, if I want to paint maybe a tissue box cover that goes with it. I can go to my blue family, I can choose my color, and um, I know that my colors are going to go together because I've got them organized like that. 